Grassroots organizing, I think it's the most important social justice or movement work period, and it's certainly the most important nonprofit work. Um, and that is work one, where you're organized to build power for an, a currently oppressed group, right? So that's distinct from grassroots organizing, if people say they're doing grassroots organizing, but it's all pro people with lots of privilege. So that may be activism and important and mobilization, but it's not the grassroots organizing, right? So that's important is that, that it's a strategic constituency, not just because they're like more oppressed, but because if you want a new society, you need to figure out a strategy where the people in leadership are the ones who have the most at stake in changing the society the ones who are gonna be the least satisfied by little victories, right? And so it's a, it's a strategy thing, not like an identity thing. Um, so that's one. And then two is having grassroots organizing um, that is as democratic and accountable to, to con constituencies as possible. So where you have membership, where you have real leadership development, and where you have um, grassroots leaders um, identifying what they think are the key problems and identifying their own solutions and then finding and winning them and experiencing the struggle of how you fight together and how you win collectively um, and then building a base through that, right? So you're growing and growing and growing and that's why it's fundamental to movement building because you, there's no movement in the history of the world that hasn't had organized bases of people at its core. Ultimately, you need tens of millions of people, but to get to tens of millions of people to change the country, we're gonna, we need organized spaces of people and base building is how you do that. And there's, there's just no substitute for that. There are other things can layer on top of it, online organizing and state advocacy and policy, like all these other things can layer on top, but you can't substitute for that. And so within that grassroots organizing though, there's um, a sector that sometimes is called like the transformative organizing sector or the left edge of grassroots organizing. So that's organizations um, like in Boston City Life or in New York, Community Vo Voices Heard, or in Oakland and San Francisco, Caso Justa Just Cause or Power, um, all of which, interesting left, have largely queer staff, even though they're not uh, queer organizations, um, who uh, do that grassroots organizing and base building work in working class communities of color, but um, uh, do it with, a, um, a deep analysis of the root causes of community problems and so that they're developing leaders with a movement consciousness and a movement identity that goes beyond the organization. So even though they're, they're like, recruit out there, let's recruit for Casa Justa, and we want join people to join our organization. Their clue that Casa Justa could die tomorrow, it, that would be fine because it's actually part of a broader movement, and it's the movement that we're trying to build and not just the organizations. And all those organizations that have that kind of consciousness, their leaders are strong. Like, they're the strongest leaders I've ever seen, and they're probably gonna be the ones who are gonna be the most lasting. Um, and they're, gonna, they're the ones least demoralized by budget cuts and you know all the things because they've been sort of prepared um, politically um, to think long term. For me, saying the thing about base building is fundamental and there's no movement building without it means that I think everyone who's committed to social justice needs to figure out how to have a relationship with grassroots organizing. I think there can be people, individuals in social service organizations who have a critique of their social service organization that can figure out how to have um, a partnership and a relationship with a grassroots organization who's leading a fight on police accountability or something and figure out how they can support it even though they're not that organization. Or, or people who are in advocacy organizations that don't have a base and, and can think about, okay, well either should we shift to a base building model, which is what I did in my organization, or um, what are ways that we can change the power dynamics so it's not just all of us professional advocates speaking for working class, low income people, um, what genuine partnerships and alliances can we make with grassroots organizers so that when the press call us, for example, on an issue, we actually have the relationships to say, instead of just talking to me about blah issue, actually there's this grassroots leader, you know, named Barbara, who you should talk to. And so it lifts up their leadership instead of just, you know, like there's all different kind of micro and big ways that I think everyone um, needs to figure out the relationship uh, and I think for queer folks in particular, um, I think l getting the experience of how to do that in, non in queer positive but non-queer spaces is essential because it's basically a taste of what our movement really should look like, what a real transformative movement is going to look like. It's not going to be only a queer movement and it's not going to only be a straight, you know? And so people actually experiencing what it's like to be
to be in a position of humility where you're in a support role, but then also find spaces where you can, you're self-determined, like that combination, I think we all need to have that experience. And that's sort of an individualistic thing to say, or uh, an individual thing that I, um, but I really think that strongly because I think, you know, and I think academics <laughs> um, should have to do that. I, I mean, just really anyone who sort of talks a talk of like, should figure out, you know, and even if it's like, um, volunteering to support um, at events for grassroots organization, you know, um, for organizing base building groups. Um, because the other thing it does is it prefigures the kind of historic alliances that are going to be needed to really win one day. The thing that I'm personally excited about doing in this moment of my life is rebuilding a real left. Like there used to be a real left in this country of like, organizations that were explicitly socialist or explicitly anti-capitalist that were big and vibrant and um, like the CP in the 30s we need to get back that kind of a left but it needs to be very different and it needs to be the kind of left that queer folks feel not just affirmed in but you know are in leadership of it needs to be the kind of left that's not dogmatic that's more democratic um, where people of color are in um, strategic positions of leadership that's inspiring to people so people are like those are the crazy people who say crazy things but like those folks have a vision and they think something else is possible and the leadership of that organization looks like my friends or the people who I struggle with in terms of the nonprofitization it doesn't matter to me what form left or like if they could be some of them could be C3s technically historically they haven't been um, but to me, building a new kind of left that can, prov which is different from there being people with left politics in organizations. So like, you know, who, um, who see themselves self-consciously as playing a role of thinking about um, building a long-term movement to replace our current system. That is fundamental to me, building a new, like if we don't have the, um, a more vibrant, strong, inspiring left, like capital L left in this country, progressives and socialist people in nonprofits and else are just going to continue. We're gonna, everyone's just going to be confused. <laughs> like you need people who can consolidate some leadership. And pretty much every social movement in history has had some crew of people, not like a vanguard, but like some crew of people whose focus is on the long term, who aren't just satisfied um, or who think of themselves as um, building for a long-term future beyond the, 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 the fights of today. And if we don't get that together, I just, I don't think, I don't think our, our non like our reform work, our policy fights, I don't think that's all gonna get very far in the next period. Um, I think as the environmental crisis and economic crisis, like as all those things deepen and get more interwoven and <laughs> get more complicated, the need for clear vision and clear strategy is going to become greater and greater and or else people are going to just become more and more despairing and actually leave any kind of social justice, social change work. Mm -hmm.